and welcome to this year's Drinking with Dana Halloween Spooktacular. Uh, I'm so glad to see you all out there and welcome. Welcome to my kitchen. Uh, as folks who have been here a while know that the Halloween Spooktacular is just the same but more. Uh, but I try and keep things a little spoopy themed. Um, but I'm so glad to see you all here and thank you all for joining me. Uh, Morningwind says, hello, happy spooktacular. Happy spooktacular to you too, to all who celebrate. Um, so, uh, no big announcements. You know, kind of know what's coming, although it is a longer than usual episode. So strap in. Um, I'm also going to try and, uh, do a couple of clever camera things later on. So wish me luck. Um, Repentant Imp says it's a beautiful dress. Thank you. I love this dress. I've had it for ages and, uh, I absolutely adore it. I couldn't, I couldn't get together a good costume this year. So I think figured the haunted mansion wallpaper and ghost earrings would cover, cover the bill. Um, let's see. Um, and oh, Lori's saying hi to everyone too. So hi, hi Lori. And, uh, Lori says hi to everyone in YouTube land. Um, so let's start off by making a drink. Now, I've said before a lot of, um, Halloween cocktails, Halloween themed cocktails have the same three names. There's Witch's Brew and Vampire's Kiss. And I forget what the third one is, but there's, you know, millions of drinks that have the same names. This one is called a Skeleton Key Cocktail and is actually a defined drink. So uh, it was invented in Detroit in 2011 by Brian Vollmer who, uh, for a local Halloween cocktail uh, contest in Detroit, um, which he won with this drink. And um, he was a bartender at a steakhouse named Roast. Uh, for those of you who... Our Food Network fans, Michael Simon owned that restaurant, um, but that restaurant is sadly no longer around. Drink's still good, though. Anyway, it got popular in the region, and I decided to make it. Um, some people say it said it was, uh, although not the drink creator, said it was uh, named the Skeleton Key because it lacked nece uh, unnecessary additions. It's kind of a stripped-down drink, but... That being said, it's actually a little, little complicated. So let's get to it. Um, ooh, I actually don't have my uh, shaker here because I am well prepared today. I will be right back. <sighs> it is clearly gonna be one of those days which is bad because it's going to be a long one too. All right, so uh, as usual, I did not actually put this in the right order. You want to always add the cheapest stuff first. Oh, and thank you to our anonymous benefactor uh, for uh, giving Repentant Imp a uh, gift subscription. Uh, also, uh, I apologize for messing up this name. Uh, a Dalek? Oh, it's a Dalek. Um, I, I am hoping, um, complimented my dress as well. Thank you. I love it. Um, so, and less folks think this is a, only a Halloween thing. No, I wear this all year long. I love this dress. Um, so I'm going to add a half ounce of, uh, lemon juice to start off. Like I say, I'm doing it out of order from the recipe that's up on the screen. Uh, so... Uh, here, I'm going to use this knife for reasons. Should be using the big butcher knife for Halloween reasons, but uh, perhaps not today. All right, need a half an ounce here. And that's about right. Get rid of the uh, seed that came out of the lemon. And add that in. All right. Now we're going to add, um, because the ginger beer comes later, I'm going to go from the top and add uh, an ounce and a quarter of bourbon. I'm using a uh, two bar straight bourbon whiskey. It is uh, a local distillery. 
Oh, and also thank you to our anonymous benefactor again for giving Darth Kristoff a uh, tier one sub. Always appreciate that. You make this uh, you make this show possible. So thank you very much. Uh, as always, your um, your donations, your tips, anything you want, anyone wants to donate uh, will be used entirely irresponsibly on women and booze. So that is the drinking with Dana promise to you. All right, I'm gonna now add three quarters of an ounce of elderflower liqueur. Saint Germain is the elderflower liqueur. If you go to your local drugstore, um, it will. That's what you will see. So. Okay. And so now we've got the bourbon, the elderflower liqueur, the lemon juice. We're going to shake that up and strain it into my glass here, uh, which I am actually going to put a little bit of ice into. So I will be right back. Oh, and our anonymous donor strikes again. Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate it. I can't say how much I really appreciate this. Thank you. Uh, that's a little too much ice. Oh, it's because I did it on cubes instead of crush. All right, so I'm gonna toss about it. Let's a bunch of that out. Also, I need to put some ice in here. I'm not that keen on our new ice maker. So we should probably put the cap on here. All right, should we shake this up? Sorry for redlining out the uh, microphone here. I don't think I've ever noticed that I do that when I shake this, but we're gonna pour that in here. Now we top this with three to five ounces of ginger beer, which in practical terms means just bringing it pretty much to the top. And I'm using a uh, cock and bowl, which is a fine ginger beer. Uh, I use their diet stuff because I honestly can't tell the difference between their diet and their non-diet. So why waste the calories? Uh, yeah, of course, any, any ginger beer will do, but not ginger ale. Ginger ale is different than ginger beer. Ginger beer has a ton more spice and flavor to it. And so about like that. Should probably put a little more ice in here. Uh, there we go. Because now we do the, well, now we're going to stir it up just a bit to mix that ginger beer in with the rest of the ingredients. You don't want to, um, you don't want to stir it too much because you don't want to lose all of your foam. But you do want to combine the two. Otherwise, you get different flavors at different levels, and that's always just a pain in the butt. So the last thing we do is add eight dashes of bitters. Now that's a lot of bitters for those of you who are familiar, but what it is is basically a teaspoon of bitters. Um, and there are some drinks out there that use a lot more, like an ounce of bitters, uh, uh, specifically an ounce of Angostura bitters. And in my opinion, that's, I, I actually haven't made one of those. I do want to make a Queen Spark Swizzle at some point, which I believe is one of the ones that calls for that many bitters, uh, but, Bitters are a lot, so. But what we're gonna do is, and I've got the, still have the restrictor on here, so I'm just gonna kinda shake it back and forth until I get a teaspoon. But what you wanna do, just kind of drizzle that over the top, and it should make a nice reddish, uh, it's supposed to make a nice reddish cloud across the top. That looks like blood dripping down. I use a straw here to kind of 
get that started. And we'll take a look and see how it looks. Um, I don't have my light in the right spot, but you can sort of see what's happening as the blood drips down the inside of the glass. Now, of course, that means you're going to get a huge blast of bitters up top and very little down below, uh, at least until it's mixed up. So I'm going to try it both ways. Here, let's see if I can get this to work. I've got things kind of moved around a little bit this time. And yes, my very high-tech flashlight system. Uh, let me... Sorry. Ah. My very crummy flashlight. There we go. There we are. Shows you a little bit more of how it looks. Morning Wind says, ooh, vampire treat. And Winter Vespers goes, eek. All right. So let's get back to that. And let's give it a try. So cheers, everyone. Happy Halloween. A couple weeks early. Hmm. Hmm. Very nice. Uh, Repentant Nim says it's a horror movie flashlight. It absolutely is. That thing goes out at just a moment's notice. Right when you need it. Anyway, uh, let me take another sip and let you know how it is. Um, so right now, because the bitters haven't really been mixed in, I'm just getting that, um, almost like a sour flavor, uh, by which I mean like a sour cocktail, not necessarily that it's sour. It's actually fairly sweet. You get the floral notes from the elderflower liqueur. You get the uh, lemon that's been sweetened up a bit because elderflower liqueur is actually very sweet. Um, and also there's all that ginger beer in with it, which is, you know, adds to the sweetness. Um, but on the top, you've got all that, uh, all those bitters. Uh, the bourbon is, is present, but there's so many, so much else going on. It doesn't really stand out. It's sort of like, uh, the base note in the whole thing. Uh, you know, it's there. And you can kind of feel it, but it's not really, it's not really the point of the drink right now. So I'm going to stir this up and get those bitters all through it. Changes the, the color quite a bit. You can see now kind of a rusty brown, not nearly as cool as the original. But the taste is very different. Well, it's significantly different. There's a heavy, astringent note up front, and you get those baking spices now all the way through. Because that's what Angostura bitters pretty much are, is they have a lot of baking spice flavors. Not so much cinnamon, but like an allspice, nutmeg, that kind of flavor to it. Also, Darth Kristoff says skull. Skull as well. Hmm. So all in all, it's still that sweet floral drink, but with that, you know, with still the bourbon note going through it, but now it's got the baking spices mixed in and it makes it more of an autumnal drink almost. Oh, well, not almost. It does make it more of an autumnal drink because now all that floral stuff also has sort of a, I don't want to say pie spice, but kind of a pie spice uh, flavor to it. That, uh, that gives it more of an interesting note and also, um, I don't know, just more of an autumnal feel to it. So I really like this drink. Um, you know, elderflower liqueur is not something everyone's gonna have on hand, but it's not that hard. There are enough drinks out there that, you know, getting a bottle of St. Germain is not a bad addition to your bar. If you wanna give it a try, uh, you can always find the little airline bottles of it that are not that expensive. Um, by the way, I have the back door open right now because today was surprisingly warm here in Seattle. Uh, so, there, but they're still doing construction across the street. So, if I don't know if everyone can hear that or if it's quiet enough that you can't really hear it, but I can always shut the back door if we need to. 
So, anyway, that is the first drink. Uh, Skeleton Key Cocktail. Good drink. I really like it. Um, you know, a little, little fussy in terms of presentation, but not really that bad. As you saw, the, the bitters do just kind of float on the top until you mix it in a little bit. So, so there we go. And let's plow on through to the next one because this is kind of the cunning bit here. Uh, we are going to, uh, let me move that. We're going to make caramel and I'm going to do that over at the stove. And by caramel, I mean caramel sauce or caramel sauce, I should say. I always pronounced it caramel. I don't know if that's a regional thing, but uh, I suppose it's actually pronounced caramel. Um, how do you... Let me know in the chat or in the comments how you pronounce it. Is it caramel or caramel? Um, but let me set a few things up here and see if I can get this to work. Um, all right, I don't need that, I don't need that. All right, I'm gonna turn this. And then... I am, okay, there we go, I have gotten fancy and am going to be using a second camera today, because I remembered I had one, as long as no one is going in and out of the kitchen, it should be okay. There we go, uh, no other way. And I do just have it clipped to the, uh, my kettle here, so <laughs> I can move it around in theory. There we go. All right, so, uh, actually I'm going to, back right here, uh, Darth Kristoff says that I've always pronounced it caramel, okay? Good, uh, and uh, yeah, so that's a different part of the country. So interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know, I've just always pronounced it caramel, so. Um, let me talk a little bit about caramel sauce though. Actually, here, here we go. <laughs> uh, caramel sauce can be a bit tricky. Uh, I just wanted to give some warnings here before you try this. Uh, caramel sauce isn't as hard as a lot of people make it out to be. I do want to say that. But there are a few tricks to it. Uh, one which will keep it from crystallizing and ending up kind of gritty. And the other one is that, let's just say, um, professional chefs apparently call car caramel or caramel, uh, especially the sauce, at, uh, they call it uh, culinary napalm because it gets hotter than just about anything and it's sticky. So if you get it on yourself, it's you're going to get burned. So be careful with it. Um, just just be careful. That's all I'm saying. Um, let's see. Uh, Darth Kristoff says, but yes, Texas doesn't pronounce stuff goofy or goodly. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Need new glasses? Or, no, I just need to take them off to read. All right. So. Uh, let me go back to this camera here, and the first thing I'm going to do is add one cup of sugar and a half cup of water to this. And, well, actually, before I do that, uh, one thing that this recipe says is you need to uh, get all of your ingredients together first, which makes sense, which you'll see in a minute. Um, and that means I need to get the cream and some butter out of the fridge and not trip over my camera cord. All right, so I've got those standing by. Just a heavy whipping cream there. All right. And Morning Wind said, sorry, had to AFK for a second. Uh, what are we gonna do with this yummy stuff? We're making caramel sauce or caramel sauce, depending on how you pronounce it. Uh, so we are going to, uh, once I make the caramel sauce, that's that's the next bit, and I will talk to you about that in just a second. But first thing we do is add to the pan 
Uh, like I say, one cup of sugar. I'm making a full batch here. I, um, and that's actually something I should mention. Normally I only make, or I've been making only a half batch of this, um, which is plenty. Uh, if you're gonna use it to make the drink that I'm gonna make next, half a batch is plenty. If however, you want it like for say, to pour over vanilla ice cream or uh, something like that, then uh, you might want to make a full batch. And Now, you may be wondering why I am using just the metal measuring cup to measure this. A, because it's just water, so I'm rinsing out the cup to, so I can put it away later because it just had sugar in it. Uh, but also because um, <laughs> this way I'm keeping consistent. It's two to one and it's the same measuring cup, so it's going to be exactly the same amounts. All right, so we're gonna turn the temperature up to medium high, which hopefully that's what this is. This stove top gets a little warm Oh shoot, I'll fix that in a second. I had to get a spoon out. Uh, all right, first time for everything. All right, here we go. So I'm just gonna stir this around until it, oh, come on you. All right. There we go, okay. All right, so again, just stirring this around until the sugar dissolves, and then I'm going to stop stirring it. And the reason for that is um, basically stirring it when it gets uh, too hot uh, will cause there we go. Uh, will cause uh, crystals to form. Basically, the spoon gives nucleation sites. Um, it's a whole thing. I won't get into it too much. Um, you don't have to worry that much about it, but just in general, it's best to stop stirring once the sugar dissolves. So, actually, I'm going to turn it up a little higher just to get the water going. And then I'll turn it back down again. So. <sighs> and in the meantime, I'll take more drinks, or more sips of my, my lovely drink, which is why I did this one first. Mm. Not that they aren't all good drinks tonight, but. Uh... So. <sighs> What's everyone doing for Halloween? I, I will say that the, the making of the caramel sauce is going to. Um, going to take a little bit and uh, unfortunately it does require constant attention otherwise uh, it's, it is easy well I won't say it's easy if you don't pay attention you can cause some problems such as uh, burning it um, and also like I say if you leave the spoon in there uh, too long you can get some some gritty bits inside, but hopefully it won't be too long. Um, let's see. Uh, Darth Kristoff says that he has no plans at present. Yeah, we're probably just going to stay in and, you know, answer the door for trick-or-treaters, maybe watch some spoopy movies. Uh, we're, we watched Werewolf by Night last year, and I think we're probably going to try it again. Although, uh, I think Lori got a little frustrated last year because it kept getting interrupted by trick-or-treaters. So maybe we'll watch like YouTube videos or something like that until uh, the point where the trick-or-treaters stop for the night. And then we'll watch Werewolf by Night again. Um, let's see. Uh, Winter Vesper says, for Halloween, we're dressing up and watching movies with comfort food. Sounds perfect. Yep, we're going to do the same. I do actually have some costumes, but none of them are suitable for cooking because they all have like, I have this gorgeous velvet princess dress, but it's got sleeves down to here. And you don't really want that when you're cooking 
over a hot stove. Um, and by the way, I just heard this starting to simmer a little bit, so I turned down the heat to, again, medium high. And I am going to, it's, it's cloudy, but I think all of the sugar has pretty much dissolved at this point. It's just leftover air bubbles. So, um, as you can see, well, hopefully you can see. All right. Um, let's see. Repentant, uh, so Winter Vesper says, I bought a Ren Faire style dress. Oh, that's going to be gorgeous, I bet. Uh, yeah, I need to uh, get ready for a Ren Faire one of these days, too. Um, I know uh, Tanya, who's often here, uh, uh, does rent or did rent fair this year. Um, I'm gonna have to see if she's, you know, where she got her dress. Uh, and Repent Nip is putting on pajamas and socks and watching horror films until four, then going to hang out with friends, handing out candy. Nice. At first, I thought you were gonna watch horror movies until 4 a.m., not 4 p.m. And I was like, wow, you've got some diehard kids around there. Um, so, as you can see, this is starting to boil. Uh, it's driving off the water that I put in there. Hopefully, you can see this pretty well. Let me see if I can get it from a different angle. Because that light... Uh, here. There, does that help a little bit? Or... Uh, I don't know if, you can really, if it really helps either way. Uh, let's see. Darth Christoph says, 4 a.m. is for after handing out the candy. Yes, absolutely. All right. So you do want to kind of shake this around a little bit to make sure that the heat is distributed and everything's still mixed together pretty well. Um, right now, it is still very clear. Um, uh, there we go. We're going to wait for this to start getting a little bit brown. And I know it may look a little brown on there already, uh, but that's just the lights in here. Um, they, they're the warm glow lights, so, um, or soft white, I guess, which gives everything sort of a brownish, yellowish tinge. But trust me, when this starts turning brown, like a good caramel brown, you'll be able to recognize that. Now, it will take a while because most of that water we put in there is going to evaporate off. Um, and actually, uh, those longtime viewers will recognize the basically what we started with as simple syrup, uh, two parts sugar to one part water. So you basically, we're boiling down simple syrup. Uh, we're driving off water until it reaches the point where no more water is going to come off. And then it's going to start heating up even more than it already is. Um, one of the neat science things is that basically, um, and this is how distilling works, actually. Uh, it can't get any warmer than the temperature required to drive off the water, um, basically the boiling point of water, because there's all that water in there it, that's going to take that energy, turn into steam, and come off. Um, once, uh, basically, once so much water is driven off that it can't dry off anymore, the temperature will start to rise to the point where the sugar starts breaking down. Basically, the sugar molecules will, uh, well, break down, and uh, that's what causes the caramelizing effect. I believe, I know in meat it's the Maillard reaction. I don't know if that's what it is for, for uh, cane sugar as well. So anyway, so that's a little bit of the science behind it while we're doing this. And just again, I'm just swirling this around every so often. Um, let me grab this. So, once this starts caramelizing and uh, getting that nice dark, or that nice golden brown color. Oh, one thing I did not do at this point, uh, which I should have, it's entirely optional, but uh, I've been adding in a uh, half teaspoon of salt to this. And so, I'm going to wait until we've actually made caramel and then dissolve the salt in that. Um, I think this actually needs that extra salty flavor. Um, you may not. Uh, it's, it really honestly depends if you like 
uh, salted caramel or regular caramel. And uh, but like I say, normally I add it in with the, the water, but I think at this point that might, it's too late. I don't want it to basically start forming crystals on there. Because um, that, you know, the salt is a nucleation point, although it's a different compound, so I'm not sure what would happen, honestly. It might still be okay. I'm not going to risk it because I'm filming. <laughs> um, anyway, so just swirling this around. Takes a little while. Um, so, anyway. Uh, getting back to Halloween. Oh, wait, here we go. Uh, Morning Wind says, I love this explanation about the sugar cooking. I feel like I'm watching the old Good Eats cooking show. Honestly, uh, Alton Brown does an episode on caramels, and it is a very, he explains it better than I can. But honestly, Alton Brown has been a huge uh, influence on me, and I'm a huge fangirl for him. So uh, that is a huge compliment. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, I, I always love the Good Eats episodes. I haven't watched them in a while. Um, actually, I don't think I've seen any of the, they came back for like a season or two, and I never saw any of the new ones, so I need to catch up with those. Um, but yeah, I, I, to be honest, I used to be a, well, I guess technically I still am a chemist, um, you know, because you don't forget those things, so... I like sharing that kind of information as well. Um, but, uh, oh, so what we want, the reason why we've got to be careful with this is um, once it starts turning brown, uh, that's when the sugar is starting to break down. And it's a fine line between really dark caramel and burnt caramel. So we need to be, we need to keep an eye on it. So, because uh, it, it can change pretty fast. And when it's time for that, uh, basically when we get the right color, I'm gonna add the butter in, let that melt, and then I'm going to add the cream in. And that'll be, that'll be pretty fast. Let's see, uh, Darth Kristoff says, the last uh, season was hard to see because it was streaming. Oh, which is, I'm not going to say that last part while it's rec we're recording this, but suffice it to say that uh, Darth Kristoff just told me where I can watch it. <laughs> so I do need to catch up on that. Uh, I will probably do that uh, fairly soon uh, then. So maybe we'll watch that on, on Halloween while the trick-or-treaters are coming. Lord, neither Lori or I are real big horror fans. There are a few... There are a few horror films we like. Uh, we both like Cabin in the Woods, although for me, actually, I think for both of us, the ending was not great. Uh, let's see. Oh. <laughs> Darth Kristoff says something I won't repeat. Uh, not that it's in any way bad, just, you know, again, probably shouldn't while I'm recording this. Um, anyway, <laughs> let's see. Uh... Oh, Alton Brown, apparently, uh, again, according to Darth Kristoff, uh, Alton Brown did a Halloween episode in black and white. So that that will be great. I will have to find that and see if we can watch it. Um, I don't know. There's one of our favorites, and I'm going to have to... Uh, I have a zip file of this stuff. I'm going to have to, to put it in a form that we can actually watch it. Is... Uh, wait, okay, no, I am so... Um, is there was a thing on the Nerdist... Uh, channel that was the Terror Twins, and they were basically late night horror film hosts in the vein of Elvira and and all of those, and they were just over the top hilarious, uh, intended to be hilarious. And then they did a whole um, uh, movie called uh, Monster Machine, which was also very good. So I've got most of that on tape, thanks to my friend Lucas, um, or on actually in files, not on tape. Um, but there were a few that were missing, so I'm gonna have to, to find those. Actually, uh, Darth Kristoff, I might send those to you because I think you would appreciate them if you don't already have them. Um, but uh, anyway, lots of fun. So as you can see, the steam has pretty much stopped which means the temperature is rising up. Um, 
and now it's really tempting to turn the temperature down to avoid, you know, to basically make it turn brown slower. But um, I wouldn't do that just because then it just takes longer and longer. And I don't think it buys you that much time. All right. Uh, Morning Wind says, sounds awesome. Uh, El Elvira and Sven Gulli, yes. Uh, they, uh, the Terror Twins are, are something else. Let's just say that. Um, uh, so yeah, I will take, do a search for them. I think there, you can still maybe find some of them on YouTube, but, uh, let's see. Uh, Darth Christoph says it's new to me that, yeah, no, I think you would, I think you would like it. I will, I will try and get you some, um, I, I think probably like Dropbox or uh, something like that would be my way to go. All right, so it's just slowly starting to turn a little bit brown here. Um, I should also note that the original recipe for this called for unsalted butter. I'm using salted butter, and like I say, I'm adding more. They also say that you can add an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, which is optional. I'm adding half a teaspoon. I think it needs it. Um, all right, it's really starting to turn brown now. So I'm gonna keep my eye on here instead of talking. And okay. I'm gonna, let's see, I think that's starting to get pretty close to it. So I'm gonna be careful and slowly add this butter to it. Now you take it off of the heat here, so I apologize if that's here. And you can see it's really starting to foam up as it dissolves that butter in there. And that is uh, five tablespoons of butter. This is not low fat stuff here. All right, here, I'm gonna move this off the burner. All right. All right, well, there. See. And while that's melting, I'm going to measure out the half a cup of heavy cream. And it is. Yeah, I'm going to put it back on the heat a little bit because that's a lot. All right, you can see now the, the that dark color underneath there. Okay. I probably could have broken that butter up a bit more. Like I say, I've been making half batches and two and a half tablespoons of butter dissolves a lot faster. And all right, so now I'm going to add in the heavy cream. And I'm starting to wonder if I did something wrong here. Put it back on the heat a little bit. Normally, I do not get. I'm starting to wonder if I got some measurements wrong because I'm getting a layer of fat on the top that I normally do not get. Yeah, there we go. It's starting to dissolve again. I think I just got it a little on the cool side. And I'm going to now add in that half teaspoon of salt. And this may end up making it a little bit gritty. I do not know. Hopefully it will dissolve, but like I say, I should have done it first thing when I added, the, basically added it in with the sugar. And a little bit more still in here. There we are. All 
All right. So that is caramel sauce. Ah, there. That is caramel sauce. <laughs> now, so I think what happened is uh, when I added all of that cold cream and cold butter, uh, it cooled down the um, the caramel enough that it, the butter couldn't incorporate in with it. Um, so I think that's just it. Like I say, in my earlier test batches, I didn't bother to take it off of the uh, burner, even though it said to. So, all right. So, but the heat's off here. There's just enough to keep it warm and liquid. Now, uh, this is normally where I test it. So, let me take some out. Grab a spoonful here. All right, here we are. So let me get the camera back. All right, so spoonful of caramel. Uh, let's see, Chad Bear says, how can you avoid that, I wonder? Pour slowly or heat up the cream first? Um, you can, uh, probably either of those would work. Um, I think just leaving it on the burner, uh, with the burner turned off, um, or, you know, let it cool down a bit and then put it back on the burner to keep it just warm as opposed to actually boiling. Uh, and Morning Wind says, uh, gently slips a spoon into the pot and runs away giggling. <laughs> uh, yes, that. All right, let me taste this and let you know how it is. Mmm. It's very good. <laughs> um, it is nice and salty without being overly so. Like I say, salt is a... Uh, I know uh, the guy, you suck at cooking, refers to uh, salt as flavor rocks. And that's kind of what it is. It brings out the flavor of everything. Uh, and that's what it's done here. Um, it actually kind of cuts the sweetness a little bit and gives it a, a richer flavor. Um, very creamy. Now, I do know that this stuff will set up... I don't want to say hard, because you can't actually, sadly, turn this into caramels. Uh, if you want to actually make caramels, um, again, Alton Brown's episode on making caramels is the way to go there. Um, but this is a caramel sauce. It is, it is delightful. Um, and yeah, I'm just eating it by the spoon because I can. Hmm. Happy Halloween. Uh, so. Because this is cheating a little bit. Um, because it is, it is a treat and it does go with cocktails, but I made it because there is a specific cocktail that it goes with. Uh, and actually it's a mocktail. Excuse me here. Just trying to get this off the burner. Um, specifically, it is... There we are. The Caramel Apple Mocktail. And... Uh, oh, and by, I should say that this recipe and the caramel sauce recipe are both from Brooke and Emma Fagis. Uh, from savortheflavor.com. Uh, their last name is spelled F-A-J-C-Z, which is probably either Polish or a practical joke. Um, but... So... Uh, let me clear this off, and I'll show you how to make this mocktail. Uh, Alright. Leaving this ginger beer out because we actually need it for this. Um, let's see, here's this. Oh, I do have to do one other thing back at the um, caramel sauce. 
to get started. And that is, we are going to rim this glass with caramel sauce and then dip it in sugar. Uh, Chad Bear says, a little sea salt can really elevate a good cookie or even some uh, some coffees. I can, Actually, I've never tried it in coffee. I really should. Um, that's interesting. But yeah, no, uh, a lot of... A lot of things, a lit, just a little bit of salt will make things incredibly different. Like, um, Ensalada Caprice is all about the rock salt on top. Well, not rock salt, but uh, the, the coarse salt on top. Um, and it's just not the same dish without it. Um, a lot, just tomatoes. Um, apparently, it's a southern thing. At least, that's my guess. Uh Lori likes salt on her watermelon and on her tomatoes, uh, just by themselves. So, all right. So I'm going to go back to the other camera just for a second here. Um, and got my caramel sauce. Let's stir that around a little bit. And then I am going to slowly dip the edge of this glass in the molten caramel. I'm going to kind of tip it to up on the side a little bit because I don't want it going inside the glass. Just want it on the outside. And then we're going to take it and we are going to run it in, let's see, get back here. We're going to run it through just a little bit of, this is Demiara sugar, um, or actually this is Turbano sugar. They call for Demiara, more or less, it's the same thing. Basically you want coarse sugar. Um, if you see those sugar in the raw, uh, packets that's that would probably do just fine I think that is um, actually I don't know, remember if that is Demiara or Turbano but um, I should probably pour it a little more here I'm using this because it's what I had and it is certainly good enough uh, this is Maui brand which I'm sure was bought in an ABC shop somewhere in Lahaina a while ago but you can see now that there is a nice rim of sugar caramel there. And I'm going to stick that in the fridge for just a second while I get this ready, the rest of it ready. Um, and now is something that they don't tell you in the recipe if you go to savortheflavor.com. Uh, and actually, I shouldn't have shaken that just now, but oh well. Um, which is, they say to use warm caramel sauce and dissolve it into uh, apple cider. And that doesn't work. <laughs> uh, unless you have warm apple cider, uh, the caramel will just sit at the bottom and basically harden up. Um, so it'll form this little puck at the bottom and not actually dissolve. So what you need to do is you need to take your apple cider and uh, heat it up heat up your caramel sauce, pour it in, and uh, and shake it all together really well until the caramel sauce has dissolved, and then you let it cool down. So I made some of that a couple days ago because it takes a while. This is really one that you might want to make in advance, uh, which is actually nice for a party because uh, you can have everything all ready to go. Now, what you didn't, what I should have not done here is shaken this because um, a lot of, you can still kind of see it, but there's, uh, basically a layer of solids from the caramel that precipitates out. Um, and then you have a layer of clear apple juice at the bottom. I shake it together because I like that creaminess. Um, but you could try using like a gravy, uh, separator, uh, to get the, um, the precipitates out and get a nice clear sort of lemon yellow apple cider out of it that's been infused with all of that caramel. But like I say, for this case, I am going to uh, go ahead 
and just shake it all together and get everything together in that. So I am going to now measure out three and a half ounces of the, I'm sorry, uh, four and a half ounces because it's an ounce of caramel sauce and three and a half ounces of apple cider uh, into this measuring cup, which has 18 different measurements on it and I have to find the right one. Okay, here we go. So, here is four and a half. Uh, here we are. And then I'm gonna get my glass out of the fridge. So normally you'd wanna make that up a little bit earlier, but the uh, you wanna cool it down so that the um, caramel hardens up a little bit. So you pour that in and then add three and a half ounces of ginger beer. That. And the, the ginger beer is really going to foam make giant bubbles because of the caramel and apple juice that's in there. And if you want it to be extra, because there's a little bit of space in there, and of course, you see where this is going, you could make ginger beer and caramel apple ice cubes to put in there. Unfortunately, my ginger beer ones kind of foamed up a bit. Actually, this is, yeah, I'm a little worried I'm going to overfill it here, but... I put in that ice cube and it's just sitting on top of the foam. This makes a real solid foam. <sighs> yeah. I really should dump this out into a tray, but... Of course the ginger ones are coming out really easily. There we go. Well, here. One... All right, so like I say, this is making a really thick foam. What did I do with the other straw? I know there's one around here. Oh, here it is. Okay, so I'm not gonna try and add any more because I think I'd overfill it. But that is a caramel apple mocktail. And I'll let you see it here. As you can see, completely opaque, but with a nice foam on the top there. Let's see. Avalon After Dark, first time chat, says, uh, Hi, I've been meaning to drop in for one of these. So glad to have you. I'm so glad you made it. Thank you for, for coming, and you picked an auspicious night. This is the uh, our Halloween spooktacular show. Um, getting back to the sea salt conversation, uh, Repentinim says, I grew up salting tomatoes and watermelon too. My mother did it, so I did too. Yep. Uh, there's, I, I know there's a few cultures that do it. So, um, anyway, uh, I just, I, I assumed it was from the South because I think Lori picked it up in Tennessee. I did. She says, yes, she did. All right. Uh, just a... Yeah. Uh, so let me come back to the main camera. And as you can hear, Lori has joined us. Hello. So, uh, I'm going to try not to kill myself in the kitchen. Yes. So let's give it a try and see what I think here. It's very, it is very what it says on the box. It, you can definitely tell and you get that creamy, caramelly flavor to it. Um, oh, somehow my battery's running low here. Um, Lori, you try this. And, and I, I've already told, I'll tell them what I already come to. If that's okay, okay, go ahead, go ahead. So, uh, ah. for the viewers, uh, I'm not a huge fan of milk products in general, and this sort of triggers that same feeling for me because the caramel becomes very milky in the drink. Um, it's weird for me, the ginger beer part, because basically what happens is you drink it, you get a little caramel, 
and then you get the ginger beer, and then it rounds out around the end again as caramel somehow, which is a very strange transition. So it's pretty tasty. It's just not my my cup of cocktail. Yeah. I return them to you. Okay. And I, you know, I put a straw in here, but really, you should be. I should be drinking this without a straw. Um, yeah, the side is great. It's caramel with sugar. <laughs> It's, it's hard to do that wrong. Could you put that in the freezer again? Yeah. Thank you. So yes, yeah, let me try it again with the this. Um, and I, uh, long time viewers will know that I usually um, only do half of the rim uh, because it's such a small rim around the glass. It's a narrow glass. I just went ahead and did the whole thing also because more caramel and sugar. So anyway, cheers. Mmm. Okay, so that foam on top is the one of the densest foams I've ever tasted on any cocktail. It's practically whipped cream up there, and it is it kind of bumps against your lip, and then the actual liquid comes through. The uh, as I said before, it's you get that apple and ginger flavor first, and then the caramel really comes in. Um, and that's what you're left with, but it's, let's see. Yeah, ginger and apple first, and then caramel. I mean, you're just left with that caramel flavor. I will say the sugar on the rim gives a nice texture. Uh, it's, you know, you get that, that crunch to it, which, you know, is always fun with a drink. Now, having said all this, uh, this is a ton of sugar in one place. Uh, oh, Scott's here. Uh, uh, either love the show, just driving right now, so I hope you have a good one. I'll see you later. I wish I had more time to watch. Uh, it's good seeing you, Scott. We, we're we going to be on late tonight, so hopefully you can make it back. But uh, drive safely. Yes, yeah, certainly don't pay attention to me. Just pay attention to the road. Um, Anyway, the 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 rim on here, very good. I mean, you just eat that like candy <laughs> off of here because that's what it is. So, um, for someone who's washed the glass, you're gonna need to take a sponge to the top of it before you do yeah. anything else. Like, it doesn't come off easy. Hmm. All right. So yes. So this is our mocktail for the evening. Um, it is very fun, very candy like. If you have kids, they will love it and then be bouncing off the walls. So, so give it to them before you send them off to Grandma's house. Mm -hmm. mm. But honestly, now that I say that, the actual drink part of it is re actually pretty refreshing because it's cold. It's cold ginger ale or ginger beer and apple juice for the most part practically just infused with that caramel flavor. So it's, you know, cold apple juice and, and ginger beer. So what's not to like about that? So anyway, uh, like I say, mix your, your caramel sauce and your apple cider together first um, and let it cool. You know, basically heat them up, mix that, and then do this. Uh, so Repentant says, thank you so much for doing a mocktail. You're very welcome. Um, I know that a lot of people who watch this show don't actually drink, and I want everyone to be happy here. So yeah, no, I'm definitely going to do, keep doing mocktails. I have a few more that I want to try. There's one that's a, uh, it's just called the Barbie drink. And I finally got all the ingredients together for that. So that's the next one I'm going to try out. Um, all right. So let me clean this up and then we will go on to the second food for the evening, which is going to be here. Well, here, I'll hit the button. We're going to make pumpkin cookies tonight. And I'm not even sure why I'm switching this because I need to get the book out. But let me put all this stuff away first. Uh, can you put that back in the fridge? Yes. And then I will return later to taste the cookies. Okay. Yes. That's. This is what Lori is actually here for tonight, is the cookies. Um, that is her thing. And... Um, 
So I fell in love with these cookies when we were at Pike Place Market. There's a bakery down there. Mm -hmm. I know there's like 87 bakeries down there, but there's one of them that does these giant pumpkin cookies with the uh, white icing on top. So good. Yeah, they the ones they have are about six inches across and they are just amazing. So Dana's are also quite good, although I don't think they're six inches across. No, these I'm gonna make them a little smaller. All right, so love you too, beautiful. Uh, this recipe is out of the Betty Crocker cookie book, which longtime viewers will recognize on site as my big, actually, uh, my my big go-to for any kind of cookie, and also I'm. We'll fully admit it. If I'm running out of ideas for the show, I'll just like, mm, let's make some cookies. Because <laughs> there are a ton of different recipes in this book. This is the 1963, I think, edition. Uh, it's from the 60s. Uh, this is the well, the third printing, it says. First edition. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's say what year it's from. It's 1960-something edition. Anyway... Uh, this is the book that I grew up learning. This is how I learned to cook is my mom would let me go through and pick out one of the, the recipes as long as I helped her make it. And we had the ingredients on hand. So, um, and actually, uh, I do say, uh, Winter Vesper says cookies are my thing too. And Morning Wind says this, this, uh, yes, uh, I we're big cookie fans around here. Like I say, we, growing up, we always had the full cookie jar. Uh, so, you know, as long as we, you know, and we always, you know, used it within reason, but, you know, there were just always cookies on hand, you know, homemade cookies. So, um, usually out of here. And that's, to some degree, that's why cookies aren't a big, you know, they're not, I won't say they're not a big deal for me, but, you know, I don't o tend to overindulge on them. So, Anyway, oh, Repent Nips uh, has guests and has to leave now. A thousand hugs to me and Lori. Good having you here. Thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, give my love to your guests. <laughs> and hopefully we'll see you again soon. So, all right. Uh, so, yes. Uh, one of the things that they do in this is they have random things like, you know, holiday cookies. And they'll just list a few of them out. Uh, they only have one for Halloween for some reason, and it's pumpkin cookies. So that's what we're going to make. So, all right. So, get my food processor out and reassemble it. And we're going to oh, heat up the oven to 400, which I should have done before. But it'll take long enough, it'll preheat fine. So, I am going to uh, start off with one and a half cups of brown sugar. And for some reason, the lid on my brown sugar canister is stuck. And there we go. And now I'm hoping I have enough brown sugar. Otherwise, I will show you a neat trick to make brown sugar. So. All right, here we go. Let's start with. Yeah, no, I'm gonna have to make some here, and I'll show you how to do that. Although actually, I have some dark brown sugar here, and they just say brown sugar, so I'll I'll use the the dark brown. I got I finally I I used to always only get the uh, light brown sugars, and the reason I started getting dark brown is for. Um, making candied bacon and things like that with. There are just one or two things that call for dark brown sugar, and I figure I should probably finally have some on hand. All right. So, yes, uh, we'll be right back. I just have to figure out where I put it. So, uh, talk amongst yourselves while I'm figuring this out.
I should probably have gone to uh, my, we'll be back in just a second thing, because uh, that's what I have it there for, just in case. Um, where did I put that on, actually, while I'm looking for this? Here. Da -da -da. Ah. There we go. Nope, I got it. I just need to figure out what I did with this. And folks will still be able to hear us here, I believe. Oh, yeah. here it is. Hiding behind the Ghirardelli uh, ground chocolate. It seems like chocolate would be a bad hiding place because people would in fact go for it from the past. Well, it's cocoa, so. All right. There we are. Okay. Yes. Uh, Morningwood says that's a great image. Thank you. I appreciate it. You can actually, I believe, buy a t-shirt of it in our merch store. Um, Which one is it? Oh, it's the, the technical difficulties. Uh. So, uh, let's see. All right. Um, here's my brown sugar. Uh, Winter Vesper says the image of minor difficulties is so reassuring. Isn't it though? I just, we, we don't do things small around here. All right. So this is, that is now one. So we're doing half light, half dark, and I think it will all be fine. And I will, someone remind me to add brown sugar to the list later. I have a shopping list here, so for uh, so Lori can add things to it, and so I know what she wants. Also, because I have no memory, and if I just if I didn't have a list, I would just forget to get things all the time. I can usually remember three things when I go to the grocery store, and then that's it. <laughs> Lori says two. I say I can usually remember three. But anyway. Um, so that's that. Toss this away. And so make sugar, shortening, eggs, and pumpkin thoroughly. So we've added uh, one and a half cups of packed brown sugar. We're going to add half a cup of shortening, which I had over here a minute ago. Where did I put that? Uh, oh, there it is. I should actually just start moving all this stuff over here so I have it. I was trying to be clever and leave it out of the way, but that rarely works. So I like using these uh, Crisco shortening sticks uh, so you can measure them out without, you know, basically like you would butter. Uh, this one is one I've used before, as you can see, and have cleverly uh, cut it. They, there's a little, I don't know if you can see, a little measuring thing on the side here. And uh, as you can see, I've cut it from both ends just because they didn't align up properly. But I have measured this. This is a half a cup of shortening. And I'll put that in there and then cut it up a little bit with a knife. Just so it gets it's in there evenly. Um, again, I wash my hands a lot just because, as I mentioned, I used to work in a lab, and it becomes habit after a while. Let's see, actually, I'm just gonna do it this way. Today's been kind of a weird day. I felt simultaneously over and underprepared for today's show. And um, as I think we are seeing now, apparently underprepared is the answer. But we'll make it through because that's what happens when you're in the kitchen. Uh, you just, you know, no one will tell. The cookies will still taste great. The drinks will still taste good. You just keep going. All right, so that was... 
Uh, one and a half cups brown sugar, half cup shortening. I'm gonna get the eggs now. And And again, normally I take a lot of the stuff out ahead of time, um, but because it's a longer show today, I have left like the eggs in the fridge and things like that. So let me try and break the egg on the flat surface like you're supposed to. All right, it actually works despite my dislike of it. That's one, and yeah, one of my bad habits is telling everyone what the, uh, basically everything that went wrong when I made something, and Lori gets so mad at me, although the other day she made something, and then sat down and told me everything that went wrong while she was making it, so it's not just me, I know that. Um, let's see, oh, uh, Chad Bear said, not a bad habit to have though, especially nowadays. I'm guessing that's the, the shopping list, uh, because yeah, no, I, I have no memory. I absolutely have to do that kind of thing. Um, I'm just putting the eggs back. My method of cooking, and keep in mind, we're doing shooting here at, well, it's quarter after seven at this point. My brain meds wore off hours ago. <laughs> uh, my style of cooking can be pretty chaotic at times, so I, you know, that's what you're getting. This is, I, I've long said this show should be subtitled Cooking with ADHD, and yep, there we go. All right. So, added two eggs. Now we're going to add in pumpkin. Uh, we're going to add in specifically one and three quarters cups. And I've got a plunger here. Am I doing this right? Oh, that's why it was acting weird. All right. So this will hold one cup. Actually, I've got a larger plunger. Let me go get that. Uh, oh, uh, Chad Bear said the uh, the bat not a bad habit to get into though is uh, the hand washing, but also lists. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, and Chad Bear also says cooking with ADHD finally a show for me. Welcome, welcome, uh, member of the family. Um, I am happy to have you. You are part of our tribe. All right, there's the oh. The big plunger it got stuck way in the back. For some reason, I was thinking that the little plunger was bigger than it is. And, all right, here we go. The reason I don't normally use the big one, you can see even though it's the Alton Brown actual brand, is because these have to be hand washed. It says right there, hand wash only. And I hate hand wash only things. So uh, we got the smaller one and usually it's enough. But uh, the other thing about this is you have to push in the center to get it to move. And my fingers aren't that long. Well, rather, I've got the nails there. And I don't want to break a nail doing this because I'm vain. All right. But it is nice that once you get it in the right place, it's not going to move. All right. Wow, now I'm actually wondering if I have enough pumpkin here for this. So wait a minute. 14 ounces. And this is 15 ounces. All right. We're not even going to use the plunger at all. I'm going to scoop out an ounce of this, measure it in a shot glass, and then probably throw it away. Because who needs one ounce of pumpkin? But then I'm just going to get all that in there. All right, you with me on this? <sighs> yeah. All right. Come on. 
I'm not going to even be all that careful with this. I just want to get one ounce out and then it should be exactly right. There we go. All right. I will throw that out later. Although, fun fact, you can actually feed it to your cats. Uh, and you know how I know this. It's actually very good for them, especially if your cat has problems uh, eating and uh, drink, well, not eating, but uh, getting enough uh, hydration. Because we had a cat that, the most lovey, wonderful, sweetest cat you've ever met, but also dumb as a brick. He was a himbo. Um, and he did not drink enough water and his kidneys were having problems. So they said to feed him pumpkin. And he would come in, eat his pumpkin. We'd put a little uh, dehydrated fish in with it, if I remember right, or you can correct me otherwise. But uh, just sprinkle a little on top and he'd come in and eat his. He thought it was a treat. So. Anyway, all right, uh, let's see. Chad Bear says, makes sense, solid plan about taking the one ounce out, I assume. And yes, that's, I don't know why, well, no, I know why they give you 15 ounces instead of 14 ounces, because I'm sure there's a ton more recipes that call for uh, 15 ounces of stuff. Probably all the pumpkin pie recipes call for exactly 15 ounces, but, uh, but in this case, yeah. All right, there we go. Didn't even have to dirty either of the plungers. So we are going to uh, mix all the sugar. All right, so we've got one and a half cups brown sugar, half cup shortening, two eggs, one and three quarters or 14 ounces of canned pumpkin. And we are gonna mix this all together until it is, I assume, well mixed. And sorry about the loud noises here. Skeleton pea is still very tasty. I'm just going to scrape the sides here because some of the stuff is a little far up there. And right now it is, you can still see big chunks of both the sugar and the shortening. That sugar is just not going to dissolve real easily here. Um, just get a paper towel to set this down on. And So one problem with shortening is that it does not often completely break down uh, the way butter does. You end up with like tiny, tiny particles. And let me see if I can show it to you what this looks like right now. And so you can see that, that looks kind of granulated um, so you can see the little chunks of white in the in amongst the orange and that's basically little chunks of shortening that had not completely mixed in and it's actually kind of sticking to the sides a little bit too And then I'm just going to call that good. You can let it go for a lot longer and it'll get even smaller. But in this case, I think this is going to be fine. Um, you know, in a perfect world, we, it would be completely incorporated. But I don't think we're going to get that here tonight. So next thing we do is what you're supposed to do 
is mix up all your dry ingredients, the flour, the spices, the salt, that kind of thing. And then, you know, add it into the, um, uh, into the pumpkin mixture. Uh, however, this was, this book was created before the invention of food processors. So I never do that. Uh, if you're a better person than I am, you can go ahead and do that. I'm not going to because I'm, I'm lazy and I've got more drinks to make. So we're just going to grab our canister of flour over here. And we are going to add, well, we'll start off by measuring out a cup of flour. And, uh, I just refilled this today, so it's, I don't want to end up with flour everywhere. So that's one cup of flour. I use what's called the dipping method, which is where you just dip the the cup in and then level it off. Um, there are other methods. So that's one cup of flour, but uh, actually, yeah. So we're gonna uh, stop adding flour there for a second. We're gonna add the other ingredients, the baking powder, cinnamon, nutmeg, salt, ginger, and then we'll add the rest of the flour. So it'll be a little bit mixed in at least. So, um, and make sure, yeah, I do have pumpkin cookies up there right now. So, uh, I already got these over here. Now, one problem is that I apparently either don't have ground nutmeg already, or I can't find it. But I do have whole nutmeg and a spice grater. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball the half a, um, half a teaspoon of that. Uh, but uh, let me do the other ones in order so I don't get mixed up. So, start off with a tablespoon of baking powder, which sounds like a lot, and it is, but these are pretty cakey, cake-like cookies. So here we go. One teaspoon of baking powder. Make sure the baking powder, not baking soda. And just gonna tap that in here. And then we go to one teaspoon of cinnamon. It's good to see everyone here tonight. I um, glad we have all of you here for this show. Um, I say, uh, oh, I didn't mention this at the beginning, but I should. I mentioned it last week, and we'll probably mention it again later on. Oh wait, this is one teaspoon of cinnamon. But uh, I am not. The next scheduled show would be for the day after Halloween, and I am not gonna do that. So we're gonna skip the next show after this. I could probably use a break anyway, even though I just took a big break, but you know, it's been a rough year. So uh, the November 1st show we're not doing, and the uh, but we will do the one after that, which I think would be the 15th, um, basically the usual one. So I'm going to estimate a uh, half teaspoon of ground nutmeg, which is actually going to be grated nutmeg. So um, about like eh, a little bit more. It's going to be a little stronger to this pressure, but I think that's about right. Yeah. I like nutmeg. All right, so um, so that is our nutmeg. Next on the list is a half teaspoon of salt. And you notice I'm not washing any of these because I haven't used the same one twice yet. So half teaspoon of salt. And yes, talking about Alton Brown, also the Alton Brown salt cellar. Um, Chad Bear says, I love fresh nutmeg for spice. I agree. Uh, for cocktails, I always use it. Usually for baking, um, I'm a little, I'm a little lazier and just use already, you know, for the pre-ground stuff. Um, just because a lot, you know, that and cinnamon too. 
just because it is kind of a pain to measure and you end up having to estimate. Um, so, but, uh, but yes, for cocktails, definitely always use the fresh. Uh, nutmeg and cinnamon on grilled pineapple is best dessert. Wow, I have not tried that, but I'm going to have to now. Um, we quite frequently get uh, fresh pineapple here. Um, usually when I'm making teriyaki or something like that. Sorry, I'm just popping the uh, plastic thing off of the ginger. Uh, so I can measure out a quarter teaspoon of that. But yeah, no, I often do uh, pineapple as a side dish with teriyaki. And, um, and sometimes for other things as well. And so I will definitely try gin uh, cinnamon and nutmeg on that. All right. Quarter teaspoon of fresh ginger, or not fresh ginger, of uh, dried ginger, powdered ginger. And let's put this back on. All right. So that is all the spices and salt and baking powder that need to go in there. So now we need to add another cup and three quarters of flour. So do the cup first. Now, of course, because it is a, you know, um, two and three quarters cup, you could measure out, what, 11 quarter cups of flour, uh, but I, I'm not going to. Uh, but that way you'd only dirty one measuring cup. So, all right. Also, I always have to have Lori uh, count off, the, or help me remember how many of these I've added. So uh, she's not here, so you'll all have to do that. So that's one quarter cup, two quarter cups, and three quarter cups. Oh, oh, oh. All right, but yes, if I don't count them all out loud, even just to myself, I get distracted and forget where I am. And sometimes I'll start counting before I add it. And then I'll be like, was that the last one or the one I'm adding now or what? So it always helps with uh, Lori or someone else being here to be honest. So, all right. So we've now added the flour, baking powder, cinnamon, nutmeg, salt, ginger, and we will let's see, blend around, stirring well until blend until well blended. So that's what we're doing now. I just get to scrape the sides here quick. Just using the spatula to kind of mix things in a bit so that we don't get it dusting up on the sides again. Ah. mixed already. So um, the next thing we want to add, so the recipe calls for one cup raisins and one cup chopped pecans. However, if you'll notice, oh, I guess it is chopped pecans that are on the list. Lori doesn't like nuts in pretty much anything, and pecans are a particular hatred of hers uh, because her family had a pecan tree growing up, and she ate so many when they were kids that she cannot stand the thought of them now. So we're leaving those out this time, but I am gonna add the, the cup of raisins. Um, also, I wanna check something here. Let's see. So I can see, because I am have powers, that there are a bunch of folks out there who are either uh, not following or, um, no wait, Okay, there we go. Uh, we're not, at least not talking. So I want to say hi to all of you as well. I appreciate you being here, even if you're just lurking or uh, hanging out. 
uh, I still appreciate you being here. Uh, it would be great if you followed. Uh, you don't need to subscribe or anything, but having you follow or even chatting, all that, uh, is basically helps other people find the show as well. So uh, I would appreciate that. Um, also, just, you know, it'll, it'll let you know whenever I start up, unless you turn that off in your, uh, your notification settings. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I don't tend to... to I don't follow, well, actually, no, I do follow a lot of folks on here, and I just then go in and you can set it by channel which ones you want notifications for. So, like, uh, DJ Star Noir, I always, you know, get her notifications. If Xander Zero somehow comes back and um, does another show, I'll get a notification, an email about that. But uh, things like that. So, anyway, we're... If you follow or not, uh, subscribe or not, appreciate you all being here. All right, so I am going to add in the cup of raisins, and these I am going to mostly stir in by hand. I might run it quickly. I don't want to chew up the raisins with the blades. Same thing as when I was making the uh, cocoa apple cake a little while back, uh, and that had chocolate chips. Uh, by the way, if you haven't seen that, um, and for those who don't know what I'm talking about, uh, kind of a long story, but basically I was going to make cocoa apple cake for a show, and I had to make a bunch of it ahead of time, which I did, and I recorded everything dutifully, and I was going to you know, edit it all together and put it in the show, and the problem is I forgot to turn on the microphone. So instead of showing you a silent movie, uh, I re-recorded it later and finally just put up the video on YouTube. Uh, it's one of my favorite uh, dishes. Uh, I think episode 202 is where I actually taste it on the show, but the uh, the video is up on YouTube. So, all right, I'm just going to pulse this a little bit to get the rain more incorporated. And then we should be ready to go. So, oven's at 400, and I'm going to get this camera out of the way, so, you know, there. Um, and I'm going to get a baking sheet. I'm only going to make a uh, one batch on camera. I'll make the rest later, and I need to clear some space to set this down. And I'm gonna get out some parchment paper. Now one of my, my old thing of parchment paper is falling apart, so I'm gonna use a new one. You can tell I don't make a lot of things with raisins in them, and or I'm, I'm opening up a lot of new things tonight. The raisins are because uh, I actually apparently hadn't made things with raisins in so long that my raisins were best used by 2018. Um, and there was something else that I was, uh, what did I just open also? Oh, the brown sugar. Uh, that's just because I don't use, um, or I hadn't used dark brown sugar bef much before um, and always just got away with either light brown or um, you can actually, so let me stop for a sec. Uh, so one of the things you can do, there are a lot of substitutions you can make. Um, Right. Uh, there are a lot of substitutions you can make, uh, and a lot of, you know, you can basically make a lot of things in your kitchen. Uh, for example, a classic one is buttermilk. Uh, you can just add lemon juice to milk, and it will, and then let it sit for five minutes, and it will become buttermilk. Or, it's actually sour milk, but it's close enough. It's a good uh, buttermilk substitution. Um, then uh, brown sugar, uh, dark brown sugar rather, you can actually substitute or really make by adding molasses to, uh, uh, to either regular sugar or light brown sugar. You can make dark brown or light brown depending on how much molasses you add because that's essentially what it is. Um, let me just stir this up. I think there's some traces of pumpkin on there. All right. 
and watch me get this all loaded up and just flip it onto the floor. Okay, so I'm just going to drop this by uh, basically spoonfuls on here. You can make larger cookies, but I'm not going to. These will end up being plenty big as it is. Hopefully I'm not making them so big they're going to run together, but I think it should be okay. <sighs> and as Lori mentioned earlier, these are, uh, she got her love for these at Pike Place Market at that one bakery down there. And I wish I could give them a plug because they are a great little bakery. They're actually right across the street from the actual market part there, um, but still in that same complex. They're on that, that road there. And um, but they, they make fabulous ones. So, and, but I am going to actually frost these, and that's what we're going to do next, is I'm going to actually make the, the icing for them. Um, and that looks pretty good. All right, so... We are going to put these in for, I believe it says, 12 to 15 minutes in the 400 degree oven. So I'm going to put, my oven tends to run a little hot these days, so I'll put them in for 12 minutes. We'll see how they look. Um, and in the meantime, I am going to make the icing for them to go on. I'm going to try and get things out of the way so I can have a cooling rack over here, too. Uh, we have a tiny, tiny kitchen here. So, uh, side note, if you want to see the uh, caramel apple cider cocktail did separate out a bit. So, uh, take that for what it's worth. Actually, I should taste the bottom part of that to see how it is without the solids in there. I'll do that in just a second. All right. So, let me, uh, actually, where's the other straw? Oh, it's in there. Okay. So, yeah, it's still just as good, just not as creamy without the, uh, the foam on top. So, um, if you want to separate that out from the caramel, uh, caramel and apple juice mixture, you'd be absolutely fine doing so. It'd probably look prettier over time, but, uh, you know, because all that caramel flavor is infused into the apple juice anyway. Okay. So, icing. Uh... I am going to make a brown butter, uh, so this, the recipe in here calls for a thin butter icing for the cookies. I'm going to make brown butter icing because I like those flavors with the pumpkin, uh, but it does mean I need to heat up some butter to brown it. So. And it's right here. I'm going to switch to the other recipe here. Uh, and I will switch to the other recipe here. And we have uh, two and a half tablespoons of butter, which I'm going to put in that a little saucepan on the stove and let it melt. And then I'm going to, uh, you need to sift one and a half cups of confectioner sugar. So let me see if I have a clean half cup 
around here. No, I do not. All right. Well, I will. I no, actually, no. I got one out earlier. Where did I put it? Uh, oh, I think I used it. Yeah, here it is. I used it for the other sugar. I used for the brown sugar. So I'm just gonna have to wash this. I only have two sets of measuring cups. Apparently, I get a little dopey after about an hour and a half of this show, so I apologize to everyone. <laughs> Uh, I don't know why I keep doing these long shows, but I'm going, I, I do keep doing them, and I'm going to keep doing them, uh, because the holidays are coming up, and I'm still planning on doing a, uh, marathon charity stream, so, uh, but we'll figure that out later, I haven't 100% decided on it yet, okay, so this is my new, I had to get a new sieve, my old one, uh, fell apart, and I'm not 100% happy with it. Let me bring it over here. Um, nine times out of 10, by the way, I do not bother sieving things, but icing is one of those places where it really does help. Um, although I am just gonna measure, the, you know, measure this out over a bowl. Then I'm going to put everything in. All right. I think I have finally silenced Chad. Is anyone still out there? <laughs> or am I just talking to myself at this point? All right. So that's one. And I hear my butter starting to bubble a bit here. So I should keep an eye on that too. Not quite as bad if it doesn't go quite as bad as caramel does, but I do need to still watch it. Okay. It's two and okay. that's three. All right. All right. Chad Bear says, I'm here. Thank you. Uh, Avalon is hanging in the background. Oh, uh, you're, are you playing? Is that a game or, uh, I'm, I am dreadfully behind on games right now. Although if I remember right, Av isn't Avalon a fairly older, uh, somewhat of an older game? All right, like I say, this is a one of the kinds of sieves where you turn the knob. Not sure I like it, but or you turn the the crank here. Here, let me see if I can just. We'll go faster. Oh, ha, ah, no, Avalon is, is Chad Bear's partner. Ah, okay. Hi, hi, Avalon. Thank you for being here. Morning Wind also says hi, Avalon. All right. The butter is still browning there, still, still golden right now. And I'm actually going to set this down just for a second because now we are, butter is foaming up. I really should have uh, brought the camera back there. Eh, you can't really see it because I'm just tilting it, but it's just foamed up. You've made brown butter before. It's just literally, that's what it is. You just put butter in a pan and brown it. So... I just use my fingers to crush up some of the rocks of powdered sugar. I'm going to check the butter again and it has nicely browned. So I'm just going to literally dump that in on the powdered sugar. 
it's you can't really see it because it's under the foam here but it is a nice nut brown color and smells fantastic so just gonna scrape all that in there solids and everything probably shouldn't but i'm going to All right, and then <sighs> get the last of that powdered sugar in there. Remember to turn off the burner and uh, Chad Bear says they, uh, they're they joined online too, but watching with me right now on my iPad. Well, I am glad you're both here and I appreciate you both being here. Like I say, the, uh, the numbers really do help uh, other folks find me. Um, all right, that's good enough. Uh, and, you know, like I say, I want, I want folks who want to watch to watch. Uh, it would be, it'd be nice to have folks here who want to be here. Okay, so I uh, now add one and a half tablespoons of cream. And let's see, where did I put my, yeah, here we go. No, I used those. These I have not used. Uh, for, I only used one earlier and then I washed it. So uh, we need to add one and a half tablespoons of cream and uh, three quarters of a tablespoon or a teaspoon of vanilla. So let me get the, or I know I have the cream out. No, I put it away. Uh, and I think I am. Uh, I actually, I'm doing really well tonight. I remembered to set the timer. So, all right, here we go. One tablespoon. And, and this is incredibly thick cream, by the way. I don't know where Kroger gets their cream, but this stuff is thick as anything. So you'll often see me, um, use my fingers to scrape it out of stuff because it is just seriously thick. Like you could just shake that bottle for a couple of minutes and probably have whipped cream in it. All right. So that's one and we need one and a half, a half a tablespoon is a table or sorry, is one and a half teaspoons. So I'm just going to do it this way. Uh, the reason I mentioned how thick this cream is, is because um, it can, basically it can make your icing too thick um, because it's just so dense to begin with. You're not getting the, you know, basically it's barely liquid, so you don't really get it uh, enough liquid to dissolve the sugar enough. Um, but we'll see how this goes. Um... In that case, you just add a little bit of milk or water to it, and it'll thin it right up. So I need one and a half, uh, sorry, uh, three quarters of a tablespoon of vanilla. So it's again, a half and a quarter. And there we go. All right, and I'm just gonna toss those in the sink now because they are covered with stuff. Okay. And we actually kind of want this to be a little on the thicker side um, because it will um, it'll stick better the cookies and it will dry faster. Um, and that's always one of the problems with icing cookies is that the, the icing stays wet too long. And actually these look pretty darn good. So I'm going to take them out and you can see how they look here. You can see they're just a little bit uh, browned or, you know, more than browned on the the ridges, um, but they end up being kind of a mound. They they stay nice and uh, and thick. Uh, a lot of cookies, especially like you know, chocolate chip and all that, tend to flatten out when you make them. 
These do not. These actually puff up. It's because of all that baking powder in them. And they're practically biscuits at this point. But uh, I'm going to put them on the rack right now just to cool. And then we have, I'll finish stirring together this icing. I will ice one after they cool down a little bit and then tell you how it is. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see uh, on the camera, that's, it's actually kind of a off-white or cream, well, not cream, um, but almost a light beige color. And that's both from the um, browned butter and the vanilla that we put in. Let's see. Oh, hello, Avalon After Dark. All right, so that is mixed up. I will, um, I will wait for those to cool down a bit, and then I will frost one and let you know how it is. In the meantime, normally I would make up, an, or I'd already have another pan of the uh, cookies ready to go in the oven, but in this case, I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I'll finish them up after the show uh, because I value your time. Uh, however, I'm gonna have another sip of this right now. Mm. And then I'm going to tidy things up a little bit just to give me room to make one last cocktail for the night. And then we will call it good. Okay. Um, excuse me here. And I really should have more banter prepared for these, but like I say, this is a, a little longer show than usual, so I'm running a little short on banter tonight. I apologize. Uh, if anyone has any questions they want to ask me, that's great. There's a, uh, if you see you've got the little drink tickets down in the corner, you can always redeem one of those for, um, uh, for a tell me a story or anything like that. Uh, but uh, otherwise, you can just watch me tidy. Uh, which I always find a little bit silly and ridiculous because when I was first thinking of this show, I was like, you know what? I want to do a show, but I've already done, you know, role, tabletop role playing game streaming, and the market for that is kind of saturated, which is great. I like doing my streaming, uh, tabletop streaming over on um, the uh, All on the Table, is what they're, where we are now, um, and things like that. Uh, so what can I do for myself? What kind of skills do I have to offer? Well, you know, I'm a housewife. I, you know, do housewife stuff. That's something a lot, not a lot of people do these days. So sure, let's, let's do that. And, but no one's going to want to watch someone stand around and clean their house or, you know, their kitchen or what have you. So what else can we do? Well, drinking snacks, that kind of thing. So, and yet somehow you're still watching me clean. So I apologize. I, absolutely not what I originally intended. All right. So for our last drink of the night, got the poison container there. We're going to make a corpse reviver number one. So last year I made a corpse reviver number two on the show. I did it out of order because I didn't have any apple brandy, Calvados, uh, apple jack, anything like that. Um, so I couldn't make one last year. Well, I've got a bottle of apple jack and I've been enjoying using it. So I figured, why not give this a try this year? We'll see how it goes. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, and then after I make this, I will frost one of those cookies and let you know how they are. So, uh, first thing we're going to add to this is uh, two ounces of cognac. And uh, I'm using Hennessy here just because I inherited a bottle from my dad and it's the cognac I have. It will certainly work. And I'm actually gonna make a small one of these. I'm only gonna do a half of what it normally calls for. Um, I should actually talk a little bit about the drink too. Um, so like I say, last year I did this and um, I made the Corpse Survivor number two, and I talked a little bit about the, uh, what a Corpse Survivor is. Basically, a, a kind of, almost a class of drinks. Um, and if you want to see the, the whole history, 
It's on episode 108. I talk about it and go into the um, the history of Corpse Riders. Basically, it's a pick-me-up. It's a hangover cure. It's a hair of the dog. Uh, that's the general idea. And a lot of the recipes I've seen for Corpse Survivor number one tend to make them fairly small. Um, they do one ounce of cognac and a half ounce of Calvados and a half ounce of Applejack. Um, and you know, actually no, I'll go ahead and make a, I'll make what I have on the list there. Do two ounces, oh, what am I doing? I'm pouring it straight in the glass. All right. Like I say, I get a little wacky after the first hour and a half, so, um, so, all right, two ounces of cognac in there. So, uh, corpse survivors are hair of the dog, they're, they're hangover cures. Uh, this one was first recorded in the Savoy Cocktail Book by Harry Craddock, uh, which is basically just a book of cocktails from the Savoy Hotel in London in 1930. Uh, they were basically the popular drinks all around London, and as far as we know, those were those were the cocktails that were out there at, around that time. Um, and Harry Craddock, the author of the book, says uh, this specific drink is to be taken before 11 a.m. or whenever steam and energy are needed. And if you look at the list of ingredients and notice that they're all hard alcohol, uh, you might be questioning that, and you would be right to. Um, it's kind of one of the reasons why the um, the Course Reviver number two is a little more popular because it is more of a pick me up. It's got it's got some things that will actually wake you up as opposed to put you to sleep. Um, and honestly, if this had been named anything else, it probably would have been more popular. But it really fell out of style for quite some time, uh, and it's only recently that people have kind of remembered it. Um, and I'm to be honest, I'm doing it a little bit for completeness sake, because I did do the number two last year. Uh, this is an ounce of Applejack. Uh, you can use either Calvados, Applejack, any other apple brandy you want. Calv the Calvados and Applejacks do have a slightly different flavor. Um, and if you want the most authentic one you can possibly get, use Calvados, because it was invented in London and Basically, they did a lot of cocktails that had a cognac and Calvados split base to them uh, because they could get those things from France. Um, Applejack was an American thing. Uh, Calvados is a French thing. So that's really all the difference. Well, that's the difference in the names and styles. Uh, Calvados is a little drier, if I remember right, than Applejack. But I like things a little sweeter anyway. Um, so I now I've got two ounces of cognac, one ounce of Calvados, or well, I'm sorry, one ounce of Applejack, and now one ounce of sweet vermouth. They actually call it Italian vermouth. Um, and but it is you'll find it as sweet vermouth or red vermouth. It's got a lot of names. Um, and if you're Looking at this going, that's an awful lot like a Manhattan. You're right. It is an awful lot like a Manhattan, except that it, you know, has uh, Applejack in it instead of, uh, well, quite frankly, instead of bitters. <laughs> um, although I will say when I was trying this out, I think it could use a little bit of bitters, but uh, uh, for right now, we're just going to keep to these three ingredients and then maybe I'll fiddle around with it a little bit in a bit. So I'm going to grab some ice to stick in here. All right, and then I'm just going to stir this as a stir drink. You just want to stir it until you can start seeing condensation really building up on the outside. I tend to, probably a lot of people say I overshake and over stir my drinks. I like them really cold and a little bit diluted, but you can see that. Maybe you can see the condensation building up on the outside of the, the shaker here. Of course, that's only to use a metal shaker. But 
Now we're just going to strain this out. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, personally, I think that a maraschino cherry wouldn't go amiss in this, especially a good maraschino cherry. I make my own because, as I said earlier, I'm extra. Um, but a, a good brandy cherry or maraschino cherry wouldn't go amiss. Um, Vic Bergeron, otherwise known as Trader Vic, made these and used a uh, twist of lemon on them, uh, which wouldn't be bad. So, uh, cheers, everyone. Thank you for sticking this out with me so long. Mm. It's a lovely drink. No mistaking that there's a lot of alcohol in there. Uh, I'm not... I'm not putting it on the uh, the back camera just because it's just kind of a brown drink. <laughs> uh, nothing fancy here. But, uh, the all right, I will go through everything and, and tell you how it is. Uh, first thing I will tell you is you get hit butt with that apple brandy flavor. Um, it really cuts through everything in a way I wasn't expecting when I first tried this. And it does taste a lot like a Manhattan in a way, but you, but like I say, you get that apple up front and then an apple on the finish as well. And if you, if you set your drink down for a while and it's talking like 10 or 15 seconds later, it's like, hmm, apples. Yeah, I still get that apple, that apple flavor. Now it's not like Jolly Rancher apple or it's not like biting into a fresh apple, but it is your brain goes, yep, that's apple. So, um, so I would say like the middle part, you do get that Manhattan-y, you know, I, it's not, the, there's no bourbon in this, but it's the vermouth and the cognac and that kind of thing takes the four. But the, the Applejack comes through, like I say, at the beginning and at the end, and it just lingers for a good long time. It's really lovely. Um, Chad Bear says, cheers, and just brown is still a perfectly respectable, a respectable autumn color. Yeah, absolutely right. And certainly the the you know the name of this drink, which is well earned and well established, is a is a Halloween drink. I mean, there's there's no way around it. Uh, especially when I used zombie last year too. So, you know, I started with a Corpse Survivor and ended with a zombie. And I couldn't do that this year, but I figured this was a lovely one to end on, bring it full circle to, to last year's show. Um, oh, so uh, let me get one of these cookies, put some frosting on it. Now, like I say, the uh, frosting will take quite a while to dry, even if it's as thick as this stuff is. Um, one thing you can do is frost them while they're still warm, and I should have done that, and the frosting will kind of melt into them a bit. So, um, and it will help it stick on there. So I just kind of put a layer of the brown butter frosting, or icing. I always mix up icing and frosting, and I know there's a difference, but I'm not enough of a baker to actually say what it is. If Ogre were here, he'd, I'm sure, know exactly what it is, but he's apparently not here tonight, so we will do without. So, again, cheers. Mm. So, the cookie is very cake-like, um, which I, I like. Uh, it's nice and soft. It's not in any way crunchy. It's a little bit like um, a spice cake, um, as you could probably tell from all the spices we put into it. There's still definitely pumpkin there. And the icing on top, I, I think I got a section that had a lot of icing on it because it is lovely icing. Uh, this is one of my favorite icings for this kind of thing. Oh, and... Uh... Elhawk99, good to see you. First time chat. I'm so glad you're here. 
Uh, they say, uh, hi, can't stay, but that looks tasty. Thank you. Uh, they also say, icing is just sugar, frosting is sugar, and something with dairy or dairy-like substance. Okay. Or rather, something thick. Okay. Well, thank you. I'm glad you, you could enlighten us on that. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, they did say that this was an icing, but then again, that's what they said, you know, it's from the 60s, so maybe the definitions have shifted, or they weren't quite as nailed down, or they just were, were not quite as, as right. Uh, Elhawk says, yeah, the something thick could be like butter or cream cheese. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, there was also a brown butter, uh, glaze in there that I almost did instead, and which also would work, but I like the thicker... Uh, icing or frosting on this. Uh, anyway, they say, at least that's how, uh, El, rather, Elhawk99 says, uh, at least that's how I learned it. So, yeah, that, no, that, that sounds reasonable. Um, yeah, like I say, I'm honestly not a huge baker. Uh, I will make cookies, I will make the occasional cake, but we try not to have that many cakes around the house. Um, but that's, you know, and every so, for a while, of course, like everyone, I got into bread baking, although I never did get into sourdough. Um, so, you know, I'm not, I'm not a huge baker. I don't know all the definitions. Actually better with the cocktails uh, and some of the other things. But uh, so thank you very much for that, for the uh, definitions. Uh, and also thank you for being here. So uh, I hope wherever you're headed off to next is, uh, is at least as fun as this was. Um, and actually, you know, now that I have my cookie and my, my cocktail, I think we're probably going to call it here. I, uh, that's all of the, uh, recipes I have. Oh, actually, I did want to try this, if we can. Well, we're just finishing up. Uh, you, I will get you a cookie so you can comment on those. But I did want to get out my, my peeler in here. Ah. Uh, Yes, we do. So, donate now to get Dana a bigger kitchen. Don't, don't really. No. <laughs> uh, all right. So, I'm going to try a, uh, the, I'm going to do it the Trader Vic way and put a bit of, le uh, uh, well, just a little one here. Do a lemon twist on the, except I just dropped on the floor. All right. Like I say end of the night things get a little weird all right this is what happens when you don't drink enough alcohol yeah that that was my mistake is making a mocktail instead of a in just three cocktails all right i'm going to twist the lemon peel on there and i'm just noticing i may have gotten a little cinnamon on this which actually would be kind of amazing uh actually that's something i wanted to mention is that the um uh, caramel apple cider thing that i made earlier uh, it's supposed to be garnished with a cinnamon stick. So, all right. So let's see if that changes the flavor here very much. It does, actually, quite a bit. Honestly, I think I prefer without the lemon a little bit better. But uh, you can try it both ways. See which one you like better. This adds... Let's see. And it could also be that I just had a bite of the cookie. No, the lemon, the lemon actually takes out a little bit of the apple flavor, so I think I like it better without the uh, without the lemon. Honestly, I think this is one time uh, Trader Vic got it wrong. So, all right, I'm going to give uh, Lori a cookie now and see what she thinks and get some frosting on it here. Around. Yep. It's soft, but not cakey. You don't think so? Okay. No, I mean in a good way. Okay. It's soft, but not cakey, which I kind of like. The white sugar frosting is as you expect white sugar frosting to taste. It just tastes really good with this cookie because cookies is a tiny bit dry so that the icing really makes up for that and makes it like really good. 
in more scientific terms. Also, because we have a lot of new people here, uh, Lori is my wife. Mm. So, uh, Lori, everyone, everyone, Lori. Uh, Hello, I didn't just break into the house. Yeah. Uh, so, Chad Bear says, what's the verdict? Good or not? They're awful. I should eat all of them. <laughs> that means she likes it. So, all right. Well, thank you all for being here. Happy Halloween, everyone. I hope you have a great time. I hope you enjoyed being here. I really enjoyed having you all here. It was, it was fantastic. I, I really appreciate you being here. Uh, Winter Vesper says, uh, thank you so much for a lovely evening. Avalon After Dark says, likewise. Uh, Morningwood says, this was so, so much fun. Thank you. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, everyone. Uh, remember, I'm taking November 1st off to recover from October 31st. And I will see you all the episode after that. <laughs> so take care. Uh, have a happy, happy Halloween. Bye. And a happily ever after. And a happily ever after. All right.